Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're tremendously rich. So we always had old money. But we got a whole lot of new money. If you're good and brown, Not trust you, I'm gonna show you. Hey, raindrop, flip flop. Ooh. All up on the Twitter, cause I can't stop. Twitter, grabbing our niece, she a dot dot. Cooking up laws like a crack pot. Cooking. Came from the millions to billions, figure. Millions. All the ladies, I make them quiver. Ooh. Call up the feds and they come and get ah. you. Cry me a river, give you a tissue. Our bitch is bad and bougie. Bad. Twitter figures like a Uzi. Bow. My family savage, ruthless. Bro. Got billions in properties, too. Jacob in the studio. How's it going? Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, Jacob, this is your first time in Atlanta. How's Atlanta treating you? Woo! Atlanta is nice. I have great food, great people. Like, it makes you realize how big of assholes New Yorkers are. Like, we're just so mean. Like, everyone here is like, hey, good morning, da da. And it's, it's been great. It's been really a fun time so far. Okay. I got that lemon pepper wet. The lemon pepper wet. Woo! <laughs> that was something else. You can't get that in New York. And you, have you stopped by the Waffle House yet? Yes, I did stop at the Waffle House. I had the pecan waffle. It was the all-star breakfast. <laughs> I got the hash browns instead of grits, though. I'm not really into grits. I, I like, I'm, I'm more the hash brown than the grits kind of guy. Hash brown kind of guy. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, tell me a little bit about how you got started with comedy. Like, you're this big social star now. Mm -hmm. so how did you really get into this whole thing? Uh, well, I actually, you know, I, I actually used to have a regular 9 to 5 job. I was a social worker. I did counseling. Um, I got a master's degree and everything and I was working for like two years and then I fell out of love with it I got laid off and I did a comedy rap video uh, that went viral in 2011 called I'm a Jew I rap about being a New York City Jew and um, after that I decided to give show business a shot and I started getting into the TV film world uh, making con internet content here and there um, you know I've worked on some major TV shows and films uh, but this year things really changed when I did a, a parody video to Bad and Bougie as Donald Trump as well as a uh, Soldier Boy, I did a uh, parody as Trump, but doing the Soldier Boy thing when he got jumped. Sometimes you gotta check in though. Catch faith with my big homie. Haru Bouncing! Yeah. <laughs> Y'all damn never grabbed no pussy. <laughs> yeah. Meryl, say, say Big Trump ain't from the hood. Hey, what's going on with you, man? Hey, who said Trump ain't from the hood? Yo, they said Trump ain't from the hood, though. Yo, yo, what the hell, man? Yo, yo we try to square yo, up. Yo, yo, get out of here, man. Yo, 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 someone grab my phone. Yo, whose phone is this? Phone. Yo, it's my phone, man. Uh, and that really took off and went super viral, and that sort of put me into the Instagram, social media, comedian world. And I've just been working hard ever since, making content. And, you know, a couple months ago, it really popped up with my For the, For the P Challenge video as the NYPD officer rapping. <laughs> uh, that really put me on the map, and now I'm like what they consider insta famous. Like, you know, people stopping me all the time for pictures and, and telling them, sending me messages how much they love my content. It's just been a real blessing. So, let me get this straight you went from, from social work yes. to wearing a fictitious cop <laughs> uniform, posing as Donald Trump. Yes, I, I'm very talented. And I'm character. Rapping about, <laughs> rapping about the P, yeah. So, Look. tell me a little bit about where the idea came from to pretend or even pose to be Donald Trump for? Uh, well, actually that came out about, you know, I was a very big Bernie Sanders guy. I'm, I'm a progressive liberal at heart. Um, you know, I think we were all very disappointed when, regardless of how you feel about Hillary and stuff like that, like, you know, Trump winning was like devastating and people were really upset and it was a very tense time. And I said to myself, you know, like the people need to laugh. Like I need to do something like to break this tension. So, and Bad and Bougie was the hottest record at the time at that point. So I was like, I right, let me do a parody of that. So I did it, shot it, and I dropped it the day of the inauguration. And like a day later, Worldstar reached out to me like, oh, we love this video, can we post it um, on our YouTube page? And I'm the first comedian that they ever posted like a YouTube, like a music video on their YouTube page. Okay. Um, and like, I don't really do a good Trump impression. I do like a, a hood Trump is what I call it. <laughs> kind of just like a dude from Queens, like talking shit, you know, like that, like that kind of thing. All right? My Trump isn't perfect, but um, that's the ironic thing is like, if he hadn't won, I would have never made the video and I wouldn't be where I am now. So it's kind of weird that like him winning kind of got me, got me to where I am. It's kind of messed up, but. So it's kind of, even though I don't really want to say it, him winning yeah. was a good thing. It, 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 for my career, yeah, yeah, I mean, I turned lemons into lemonade, you know, the best I could, you know, okay. and I think, you know, I think uh, laughter is really important. Um, we have to be able to always remain, keep our sense of humor. I think, like, that's why, like, you see so many Jewish people, I'm a Jewish, I'm Jewish, so, so many Jews in comedy, because we're able to sort of, like, laugh at pain and struggle, and, like, like comedy's helped us, what's sustained us as a people for thousands of years. So, 
I mean, not to really get into religion too much, but how yeah. is it? How has your family reacted? You know, I yeah. I think Jew, I don't want it. <laughs> but aren't Jewish people a little more conservative? Well, no, we're like New York City Jews, which okay. means like I don't go to temple. Okay. I, I love Chinese food, good deals, and, and shiksas, which are like non-Jewish women. Okay. You know, so that's the type of Jew I am. Now they've been very supportive. I mean, my mom, like, she made an Instagram and she only follows like me and my brother, and like she'll comment, <laughs> she'll be like, Jacob, that, those girls you're with, that's not good. Like you shouldn't do, you shouldn't be doing that, honey. Like you know, like kind of being a little judgmental. My mom, I told you when you're gonna follow me, like you're gonna see me doing things, smoking weed with chick, like you know. You gotta, don't be judgmental, but they're especially now that like you know I'm at a point where I'm like seeing some success. They're very supportive of that, and you know. Okay, so talk to me about growing up in New York City. Well, New York is very much who I am. It's very much a part of the comedy I do, the person I am. I was born and raised in the Bronx, and you know I, I think I try, I try my best to represent New York in the content that I create. I, you know, that's sort of that New York flavor. I, I, I've been all over the world. No, no place is quite like New York, and I think New York helped make me a very well-rounded person and sort of is, you know, directly why hip-hop is such a big part of my life growing up in the Bronx and, and just hanging out around hip-hop culture my entire life. It sort of helped shape me into the person I am. This is a, this is a great year for the Bronx. Yes, you got Cardi B. B. You got, yeah. There's a lot of people coming out. Yeah, the Bronx is coming back. Well, you know what though? I, I, the Atlanta sound though is still running things. You know, right. like like I, I don't get me wrong. I, lo I love Amigos. I love all that sort of stuff. But like me, I'm, I'm like an old school like '90s head. Like I love like boom bap and like real lyrics and things like that. So it's nice to see like you know, anytime New York is uh, getting back on the map, fighting for that for that attention. Yeah, you know what? I think Funkmaster Flex right now is doing a lot of work to kind of bring that back with that whole. This is what New York City sounds like. Yes, this like. is what New York sounds like. Yeah, Flex, <laughs> Flex always does that, you know? Yeah. You know, um, you did a sketch with Queens Flip. Yes, the homie Queens Flip. And I think he Shout out to Queens Flip. <laughs> I say, yo! Don't touch me, man. Don't touch me. You know I'm full of pussy. That's why I'm spitting at you. Got me. hot hollows in my nine. Now scatter your crew. I'm talking about crew like that. I seen your raps. I know they're pre written. At the courthouse, only time I seen Queens ever flipping. Flipping with the hot house of your friend, hit your game. Bars, bitch! Easy! Shmack! He did, he did some jokes about Flex, too. I think he did like a parody about that as well. Very, yeah. Me and Queens, we did a I, I Want a Battle, where I was a cop and I battled <laughs> him. And it was, it was I, I think most people think I won, so, you know, he got bodied by a cop, you know. That's, that's, <laughs> it, it's, it was poli it's ly lyrical police brutality on him, you know. So there's, I feel like a lot of the New York City social media stars are yeah. dominating. It's you, it's Queens Flip, it's Fat Rennie, Boy, yeah, Com Reggie Commodore, Fat Boy, yeah. the Commodore. Yeah. There's this guy who just came out of nowhere, Camino Har. Oh yeah, crazy, I know, yeah, yeah. All that type yeah, of New York is very unique. So how do you feel social media has played a role in what you're able to do today? Well, I mean, social media totally changed the game. I mean, when you're an actor, you know, 10, 20 years ago, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't a way to get your content out there. Now with social media, it makes it so I have a fan base, I have people, I can put out a piece of content and get a reaction right away, and it, it helps build your momentum. I mean, it's directly affected my ability to move up in the game and be recognized. And, you know, after the For the P thing, I mean, people knew me from other videos, but like, that's the one that really took off. You know, getting approached by celebrities and people like when I go to industry events, like everyone knows who I am, and that's because of social media. And right. you know, social media—it's it's a gift and a curse. Uh, but for me, it's been mostly been a gift, which is great. Okay, so I mean, you're a, a white man doing urban comedy. Yes. That. I don't really feel like there's too many people in your lane. Well, that's the thing. I, I think that's what makes me unique. I mean, there's not one being a white guy who does comedy for black and Spanish audiences. Right. And also, I rap, you know, and I rap well. I, I, you know, to me, there's a lot of white people who rap and do parodies and they're super corny. They don't sound good. Like, me, I take great pride in, in, the, in the raps that I do, the parody raps. Okay. Um, so, I think it's gonna make, it makes me definitely a unique player in this field. And I think, you know, it's gonna, be able to move me up, maybe quick. I mean, it's kind of messed up, like white white privilege strikes again a little, <laughs> a little bit, you know. Um, but it's it's I, it's something that I take. Um, I'm very grateful for. I, I honestly, most of my life, I've been more accepted by the African American and Latino community than I have white people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the comment I constantly get is, you know, 
you know, you're down, like you, you get it. Like, cause my content comes from a real place. It's not like an exploitive thing where I'm just coming into the hood and like just to get videos and views and stuff. Like these are my friends, like these are my people and, and I love it and, and I want to keep it going. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think it, for you to be as successful as you are in the urban community yeah. or, you know, in the urban comedy world, you definitely have to have an understanding of the culture. Absolutely. And you I know? think there's too many people who don't. And that's the, that's the constant. I mean, I have literally like a thousand cookouts I have to go to next summer. Like, they're like, you got the invite to the cookout. Like, you coming. No, 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 it's not a third. You know, so I think, I think that as like the ultimate like compliment when people say that to me. Now, when you get to the cookouts, you got to try the chicken. I know, and I'm not gonna. Put, I, I, I'm gonna make sure if I get a stash plate, I gotta hide it like very well, so no one else, Auntie, don't see it or nothing, you know. So, um, tell me a little bit about what role hip hop plays in your life. Well, I mean, hip hop is basically very much of who I am. It's sort of hip hop to me isn't just music. It's, it's a culture. It's an attitude. It's a way of life, and I think I sort of embody that. I mean, I think what drew me to hip hop early on when I was young was sort of this rebellious. Um, social justice message and that's why like one of the reasons why I became a social worker is because you know there are a lot of real problems in this world you know um, you know I was born with with certain privileges that other people weren't born with I'm very conscious of that so I think that's like an important thing to be addressing yeah so did you like not fit in you know when you were um, younger being yeah I mean I would definitely I definitely you know I was bullied a little bit as a kid and stuff like that um, I was kind of a herb I would say in retrospect but it's, it's really funny, it's like, like I started listening to hip hop and then my, my best friends, my friend Glenn and Mike, um, they took me one day to this place, Woodbury Commons, in New York, you might be familiar with it, in New York, and they went, I got a North, I remember I got an orange North Face, and I got the peanut butter Tims, and I got the PMB jeans, and everyone in middle school, was like seventh grade, I was like, oh my God, y'all see Jacob? Like he got swag, well I didn't say swag back then, but like, you know, like I, I kind of found my voice, like hip hop helped me find who I am as a person, right. and I, that's what I love about the culture is it really, brings people together of all races and you know hip hop is just it's a it's saved my life it's made me who i am today okay so like who are some of the top hip hop people that you're listening to right now top people i'm listening to right now uh, well definitely I, I really like what cardi b's doing you know okay. i think she's killing it um i like my, my homie axel leon from the bronx you know he's killing the game right now uh i like a lot of classic stuff too you know like i'm really into wu-tang you know dipset the D block, a lot of classic sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, Migos too. I love, you know, I, I, I got an ear for all sounds. You know, I like to turn up and um, anyone that's having fun doing what they're doing and is genuine, I, I appreciate that. Okay, cool. So now you talked about turning up a little bit. It's your first time in Atlanta. What are some of the things you're going to be doing while you're in the city to turn up while you're here? Oh, well, I know I've heard of the infamous Blue Flame. That is the, where I have to go. I've been told there's like 300 girls on the floor, and y'all nude down here? We don't got that in New York. We gotta put the, gotta have the bottoms on, and the bartenders are taking the strippers' money and stuff like that. But don't get me wrong, I respect women greatly, but you know, Blue Flame, is, I, I heard they got $5 lap dances. Is that true? Like, I heard $5. Like, in New York, it's like 20 That's what I heard. So that, and um, just going around and working with a lot of different comedians, a lot of collaborations, like uh, different people I've been wanting to work with that I've known on, through social media, but now I'm getting to meet in person. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll show up to a party, I don't know. I'm, I'm here for another couple of days and I'm going out to LA, so, you know, but it's always work first for me, like, you know, that's the most important thing. Okay, um, are you able to tell us about some of the people you might be collaborating with while you're here? Yeah, absolutely, you know, right now I'm working with a very popular comedian, Robbie World, go follow him and the, him and his crew, they're doing really great content. Um, supposed to be linking with uh, Mr. Bankshot uh, later this weekend, um, and then I'm going out to LA. You know, I'll be working with a lot of big name people. You know, Tony Skitz, Deshay Frost, Rito Brown, um, and hopefully a lot of big name other people as well. Okay. Uh, it's been a blessing. So you were talking to me earlier off camera. You were talking yeah. about how you edit all your stuff by yourself. By yep, your phone. yep, yeah. I mean, most of the content that I shoot is is done on my phone. Like that's the great thing about the internet and social media is that you don't need, uh, you know. Uh, 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 Aria camera. You don't need a million light. Like as long as you got a little bit of lighting and know what, how to at, like shoot it, you're good. So I shoot most of my content. I honestly shoot it within an hour. I edit it on my phone on iMovie and, and then add you know, the music and everything like that. And then it's out on the streets. It's uh, it's very empowering. It's like it feels like I could just like that's such an rewarding thing for me. Is like I had an idea in my head. I shoot it. I edit. I make it. I put it out there. And then it gets a reaction. And people like it. Like that's such a high for me that to feel that like 
people respond to like what's in my head. And so, like, what are some of your career goals? Like, what is it ultimately that you want to see yourself? Yeah, doing? well, I mean, uh, aside from social media, obviously, I've been working in TV and film for a while. I have about a dozen major TV film credits. I've worked on shows like Breaks, Person of Interest. Uh, I'm gonna be in the new season of Power coming up. Uh, I'm in the new Woody Allen movie that's on theaters right now, Wonder Wheel. I got a scene with Kate Winslet. So ultimately, my goal, uh, my next step in that area, is to start getting like guest star opportunities, like bigger roles. Um, but I would say like the mountaintop is probably you know win an Oscar for. Best, best actor, um, and just or be like a series regular, like a Brian Cranston on a Breaking Bad. Yeah. Uh, any of those things. Just I love. Uh, for me, I want to leave a legacy behind in the content I create because uh, I think you live forever on film. So you know, who knows if I have a kid someday? I'd like to have a kid someday. But what I do know for certain is that the film that will be there forever. You know, hundreds of years later, and and I think I think it's very special that I get to entertain people and bring light to their life. Now you talked about having a kid um, and obviously starting a family. What is it like in your dating life right now? Uh, dating life is tough, you know, when you're living this sort of Instagram lifestyle, everything right. is always like, I gotta be shooting, I'm hustling for every dollar, you know, definitely my DMs are a little more popping than they used <laughs> to be, you know, it's like, it's like the, the great uh, philosopher uh, from the South said, uh, I think from Houston, he said, you know, back then hoes didn't want me, now I'm hot hoes all on me, like, it's, it's yeah. a, you know, so that's sort of where, where I'm at right now, I'm not looking for anything serious, I'm very focused on my career, but you know, if the right, the right lady comes along, you know, we'll see. <laughs> So now, the fact that you talked about, you know, getting into film and TV more, you're yeah. in Atlanta. I could definitely, definitely see you in, like, a Tyler Perry. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I have a lot of friends from New York who came to Atlanta, and they're like, Jacob, you got to come to Atlanta. It's so popping down here in the TV film world. And, like, they got on some big shows and then went to the West Coast. Like, But, yeah, I would definitely, I could see myself doing some Tyler Perry type yeah, thing. Like that I, type of a thing. Like, I don't know who, who's running Tyler Perry stuff, but if you guys can... I'm sure I'm on the radar. I, like, that's the, I don't mean to be cocky, but it's like if you work in the urban entertainment world, like there's no way you didn't, you haven't seen my content at least once. Like it's not. I don't mean to be like cocky, but it's like if, if I meet you at a jogging mat, like usually they, they they spot me right away. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully Tyler Perry, you're watching this interview and invite me down. You know, you, I, you need that like I, you know I play those racist white guys really well. Like I'm sure you need that like sort of role in the movie. There's always that like racist white sheriff dude or something like that. You know. But, you know, I'm not racist, but you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. I could see that. Like, yeah. Jacob, the cop, chasing yeah. Tyler Perry, like, I mean, Or Medea or something like yeah, that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, to make this interview kind of come to a close yes. and bring everything full circle, is there anything that you want to kind of leave your fans with or the viewers with? Oh, wait, before we get there, you yes. talked about a mixtape. Yes. You're going to start making music. Yes, yes, that's Let's something I'm doing in 2018. I plan on uh, making a mixtape. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out to me like, when are you, where's your SoundCloud? Where are you making music? So I've made the decision I'm going to start reaching out to my friends who are major rappers and producers, and I'm going to start putting that together. Also, I'm uh, in, the, in the process of writing a film. I have uh, someone behind me that uh, basically said, you know, bring me a script. We'll be able to fundraise and, and make this movie and sell it to a studio. You know, make a script with all your Instagram comedian friends. So. That's the next step. Those are the two big projects I have coming up for 2018 to focus on. Oh. Well, I definitely um, would love to see that whenever you put that together. For sure. So now we can make it come to a close and you can just leave your fans or your viewers with something, anything that you felt like was missed out. Yeah, um, no, I mean, I really appreciate being here at Hip Hop Weekly. You can uh, see all my content at Jacob Berger Actor on Instagram. That's B E R G E R, jacobbergeractor.com. Catch me. Uh, 2018 season of Power on Stars. Uh, I'm going to be on an episode of Wild and Out MTV coming soon. Uh, episodes with T Grizzly, so keep a lookout for that. Uh, and if you need, um, you know, just, just come say hi to me. You see me in the streets. I, I love my, my audience, my fans. Uh, I love it. And yeah. Oh, just going to drop a little freestyle, something like that to yeah, wrap it up. Um, Let's drop what? a little freestyle. I feel like it's only right. Yeah. Because we're Hip Hop Weekly, but you got to do a freestyle. Let the right. people know exactly what you got going on. All right, freestyle, freestyle. All right. Check it. Yo, one, two, three. It's J A C, yeah, double O B, uh. I'm a G, yeah, I'm coming to Atlanta. Coming from New York, but I'll teach you about the country grammar. I'm the best, and I'm so sickly. Sitting on here with Hip Hop Weekly, uh. What I do, yeah, you don't get no rest. Cause Jacob Berger, yeah, I'm the damn best. One. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jacob. For thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. This is Hip Hop Weekly All Access. I'm Valerie.